I always see a lot of people um, having issues with their car idling and starting their car up, stuff like that. So I figured I can make a, a video. Um, if you're a user of Speed Duino or Mega Squirt, any aftermarket ECU, really any aftermarket ECU, this is kind of the technique that you will use to get your car running um, and idling in the beginning phases. And I might go into the acceleration enrichment too. So that deals with the transient phases of you hitting the gas and you having different um, KPA or MAP. Basically, it's like you hit the gas, the motor is expecting, is getting a influx of air coming into it and it's expecting to also have a certain amount of gas to match that. Right, so the engine has to know how to do that, and the ECU is what controls that. So that's what the acceleration enrichment does. The first thing that you have to do, you have to set up how your motor is going to deliver fuel to the engine. So this is Tuner Studio. This is the interface that you see right here, this whole thing. So in Tuner Studio, they have a field called Calculated Required Field Fuel. And what you do is you put in the displacement of the engine. In this case, my engine is only 162 uh, CID. I think that's like cubic inches. Cubic inches. Uh, I have six cylinders. My injector flow is 38. So that's 38 pounds per hour. Um, the target fuel ratio is 14.7 and that's for gasoline if you have something like like race fuel or a different type of fuel you might have a different air fuel ratio so you have to keep that in mind um, the control algorithm for this car is going to be map in tuner studio you have TPS and uh, IMAP EMAP for my setup I'm just using map only I don't have a TPS which that's a throttle position sensor I don't have that at all, so I'm just using map, which is okay. Um, the injectors squirts for engine cycle. Because my injectors are kind of large over the aftermarket ones, I only need to squirt them one time. I could change it to two or something like that, but they might not be open long enough for them to supply the required fuel because injectors are basically solenoids, so when they get the electrical or when they get the current that's supposed to open them it takes a little bit of time to open them up so I don't my injectors won't open up quick enough in that short little window of time to supply enough fuel so I'm okay with one squirt per cycle uh, injector staging you have alternator and simultaneous I'm using alternating so in my current setup because I have six cylinders I'm going to have three injector outputs, so that means two cylinders injectors will be firing at a time during their specific time in the cycle that they should be firing. I got a four stroke engine, you have a two stroke, four stroke, you know, six cylinders, injector type have port injection, some cars have throttle body injection, like the, I think LT1s have throttle body injection, the V8. I got even fire. Some engines have off fire. Um, I'm not using that. My injector layout is paired. You have the choice of semi sequential or sequential. What sequential means they all fire at their specific time within the cycle. Paired means they fire in batch. So I have a batch of three. Um, the cycle average. This just averages the map throughout the cycle of the engine. So once you have that set up, then you have to go to your trigger setup or whatever, however you're going to be able to tell the the timing of the engine after top dead center for for this uh, specific ECU. I have a Speedduino ECU you uses after top dead center. I believe Mega Squirt uses before top dead center and you're really going to have to know how many degrees at the top dead center 
or before the top dead center, depending on what ECU you use. Otherwise, the car is going to backfire. It just won't start up. So um, I'm using a trigger wheel, and what you can do is, depending on whether you have ATDC or BTDC to find the degree angles, you could count the number of teeth after it passes your what type of sensor is it? It's a uh, not a your VR sensor in my case you count the number of teeth and then you multiply it by the number of cylinders I believe yeah right and in my case is five I think it's 14 times six so that'll give you 84 something like that I believe <laughs> let me check I believe that's 84, but I don't know. Yeah, it gives you 84. So, what I have to do after that, I have to subtract 360 from 84, and that gives me 276. So, there's a little formula you could use, or you could just look it up. There's probably stuff on the internet for you to find out. My trigger wheel has missing two teeth, and the primary has 60 teeth. So, most trigger wheels, they're going to be a 32 and one or sixty and two so that's pretty much how that goes you use crank speed or cam speed I'm using crank speed in this case um, for tuner studio speed Duino, you have a selection of trigger patterns that you could use I'm using missing two skip revolutions this is how many revolutions that will be skipped once you start the engine trigger edge um, that's whether it's going to pick up the signal after or before it hits the edges of the teeth, I believe. Um, missing two secondary type single cam. I don't have that set up, so it doesn't matter. If you want to change your injector characteristics, you can change them here. I've got an injector duty limit to 90. I probably need to have it less than that. But it's all good. Injector open time. You can find this time on the internet. You have to look up your injectors and find out what it should be. Um, and once you get to that point, you got it filled out. Then you could kind of look at your VE table. Sometimes I'll use online generators to generate the table and kind of give values. To figure out what's going on um, before you even get the car cranking if you know that the car is going to idle in a specific area what I like to do I like to set the fuel and the ignition let me open up the, the spark table the fuel and the spark table I like to set them to have the same value so that way when you're getting it started it's easier to figure out what they should be the ignition pretty much stays the same, but the fuel will change and that'll help you figure out what things need to be. Now you also have spark settings. Um, my ignition load source is map. You can change it to TPS, IMAP, EMAP. I find that map works for me. And plus I don't have a TPS so it wouldn't matter. Spark output mode. I have a single channel. You could use waste, wasted spark or wasted coil on plug, sequential if you set your ECU up that way, rotary in case you have like lagging sparks. So with a rotary, it sparks twice, but there's, the first spark comes in earlier and the second spark comes in later. Um, I got my cranking advance on 15 degrees. My spark output triggers is going low. You got to be careful with this because you could burn your whatever your coil pack is. You could burn it. So you need to know what it's designed to take. The well settings. Um, my cranking dwell is 6 0. Dwell kind of deals with the, the time that your coil plug is going to be getting current to it so this is another important one because you could burn up your coil pack and you can 
it changes the characteristics of how the car is running during cruise and wide open. You might have a situation where your spark is kind of weak and you're getting misfires and you're like, I don't understand why that's going. And it might be because the dwell is too weak. If your dwell is too much, it'll burn the coil pack up. Um, if, it, if you have the duration going too long, it'll definitely burn it up. I've got overdwell protection on. Maxwell is 8. But it, it could be much lower than that. But it says at least 3 milliseconds above um, my desired dwell, so I just left it at 8. Let's see what else do we have? Um, I don't have anything like a, a IX, so I don't have anything to control the idle. I don't have an idle valve thing. Um, if you wanted flex fuel or something like that, you could have it. You got to get the flex fuel sensor. So, but I'm not gonna. I'm not setting any of that up today. I'm just gonna show you how to get your car to idle, and we might look at um, acceleration enrichment. I have to do map based because I don't have a TPS. Um, So you have a couple of variables for your map calculations. So you have one called map.threshold and this is pretty much the threshold when this table is going to be activated. So it's kPa per second. So that's basically like the rate of change of your kPa when it's going to be activated. So mine is activated at around 100. It'll start using this map and then multiplying the pulse width for the injectors. The pulse width controls how much fuel the injectors are putting into the motor. Um, when you hit the gas, this table might may or may not turn on depending on that variable of M dot. You hit the gas, the map is either going to say it's suspecting more fuel or not, and it's also going to say, um, depending on the rate of change, how much more fuel it is suspecting. You got the acceleration time, that's how long it'll stay on. I got mine at 2 milliseconds, I haven't really experimented with that. Uh, you got taper start, taper end. That deals with uh, when your acceleration enrichment is going to stop being activated when you hit the gas, depending on the RPMs. Sometimes if you're, if you're already going, if the motor is already spinning over, you know, maybe like 3000 RPM or something, you don't really need a whole bunch of acceleration enrichment because it's it's okay you know it won't really affect the motor at that point when it's spinning up so high because you're going to basically be using the map your VE map which is going to be supplying the correct amount of fuel there won't you know it's not going to be like a drastic change going on So we've got the V map here, got the spark map. Uh, I might go over launch control too. So I gotta play around with launch control. So you got your TPS, which I don't have. I'm just going off a map. Uh, you got your soft limit. I got it at 2,000 RPM right now, just testing it. Your absolute timing. You have to because I have a single channel coil car and it has a distributor. I have to be careful with what I set this to. Because if I take too much timing out of it, it's going to be firing on the on the wrong cylinder, and it's basically just going to the RPM is going to keep increasing. I don't really know why it's doing that, so you got to watch out. Well, I have to watch out for that. You got the hard rev limit. This is when it's going to cut everything off. You got the fuel adder. How much fuel is going to be adding in? I have a turbo on the car that I'm doing this on, so I'm adding fuel into it. That basically helps the turbo uh, start turning. Uh, let's go over engine protection so the type of engine protection that I have when you hit a rev limit or when you're using launch control you can have spark only fuel only both I'm using both because I don't want the car to I only have a down pipe on the car right now and I don't want it to shoot flames so that's I have it on both right now so it doesn't do that engine protection minimum rpm I think I'm going to change this to like, uh, 
I'm gonna change that to 1400. Cut method. You can have full or you can have rolling. I'm gonna experiment and see what really works. Um, soft limiter mode, you can have fixed. You can have relative. If you have fixed, it's just gonna use this value. If you have relative, it's gonna um, subtract whatever your it's going to subtract whatever it is it's just going to take five out out of your current timing in this case I use six I just want the timing to go to well no I have to use relative in this case because all it's going to do is fire on the wrong cylinder so I don't want that because I have a distributor like I was saying earlier so let me take a little bit more out to be on the safe side okay max time point three seconds so three milliseconds I have to experiment with this but this is basically the time that you'll be allowed to be in the soft limit zone before a full cut turns on I'm gonna put that on point two this is my hard limit that's my soft limit I got a boost cut on right there 180 kPa I think that's like uh, that might be like 10 PSI or something so that's how that works